In the kitchen, craft is everything. An ounce more, a minute less can make all the difference. Yet, as a michelin star chef, I know my own work is only ever as good as my ingredients. And in this series, I'm teaming up with the Balveni to meet the extraordinary craftspeople supplying produce to some of the finest kitchens in Britain. Along the way, I'll be sourcing items for a celebration, bringing together the very best of British culinary craft. I'm Michel Roux, and this is the Craftsman's Dinner. In the 19th century, steel from Sheffield powered the engine of a global empire. Today, its army of skilled metal workers have all but disappeared. But if you know where to look, you'll find that not quite all of them have gone. Will Ferriby is one of the last people in Britain making knives the old-fashioned way, by hand. I've come to his workshop to see if he can supply a truly exceptional knife for my craftsman's dinner. Now, I understand that you're a bit of a dying breed, aren't you? The, uh, one of the last uh, knife makers in Sheffield, or, or even Britain. Yes, indeed. There's not many of us left nowadays. Uh, Sheffield has definitely seen a decline in the knife making industry. So how long have you been making knives? Oh, I started off when I was a teenager, when I was probably 12. But I've, I've always loved hitting metal with your ear protectors on. Like, you can hear the ping, and there's a kind of a, a ping and a thud, but it's not really loud, and you can keep it up for hours. Very therapeutic. <laughs> it's Will's lifelong love of hammering metal that leaves his knives with the unmistakable mark of their maker. Tell me a little bit about your knives. So this is my chef's knife, so this is the most popular knife. Let's have a little feel of it. It looks... Wow. I mean, it just looks stunning. In fact, I don't know if I should use it as a knife. I'd, I'd rather just, just hang it up. <laughs> it, it's, it's a piece. I mean, it, it, it is a piece of art. For my craftsman's dinner, I need a knife that's um, got elegant style, that's obviously handmade. It's got to be a true chef's knife, but it's got to be one that we can show off as well at the table, that's got a bit of theatre to it. OK, a showpiece. Right, well, we've got the forge over there. Let's get on with it. The starting point for Will's knives is sheet steel from the final batch ever produced by Sheffield's last remaining steel mill. Once the initial shape is cut out, it's time for the fun bit, forging the steel. The blade is heated until it's white hot and then hammered while soft. It's this hand-forged technique that makes Will's knives look like nothing else you might buy on the high street. So what is it, Will, in layman's terms that you're actually doing? OK, the forging process is all about texturising the whole length of the blade and then putting these distinctive dink marks in using the back of the hammer. It's almost like your signature on the knife yeah. because it's every single hole there is different, it's unique to each blade, and it's you. It's, it's your stamp. It's, it literally is, yeah. <laughs> right, well, I want to go at this. I want to, I want to see if I'm any good at this. Excellent, let's do it. Forging can be a hazardous business. Oh, my word, I think it's been used. Uh, yeah, I set it on fire a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not fireproof. Luckily, Will's agreed to lend me his state-of-the-art designer workwear. Health and safety. I'm Sweet. ready. All right, let's get you going. You can light it. Sweet. All right, so uh, here's the gauge here. Right. There you go. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong, he says. Oh, my God. You can probably crank it up a bit further. Yeah? Whoa! <laughs> my forging technique may not be quite up to Will's standard. Off? Yeah. So this side? Yep, yeah, go for it. All the same, it's hugely rewarding to know that every mark I make will leave a permanent impression on my very own blade. Is that hard enough? Yeah, perfect. Wow. <laughs> Yet the dents in the metal aren't just there to look pretty. While slicing, each bump acts as a miniature air pocket, 
It means that while food might cling to the smooth blade of a factory-made knife, it simply slides off a Ferriby blade. <laughs> that was great fun. <laughs> but it's amazing to think that all that work you do just for a single knife. Yeah, probably about, um, about ten heats. Ten times you have to go through that whole operation. Yeah, but um, it's worthwhile, because every single mark shows. Great craftsmanship doesn't always mean using the latest tools. Will's hand-operated belt grinder is over 80 years old. It's the kind of equipment that's now simply impossible to buy. All the same, this somewhat elderly piece of kit allows Will to produce results that far exceed what could be achieved in a factory. Now, how long does it take you to do that whole process? It might take eight hours. Gee, and how's that in comparison to factories? Oh, so a factory might put an edge on in, say, eight seconds. Eight seconds and, what, about three hours, four hours work? Yeah, that's what we're looking at. So why go to all this length to grind the knife? It's the only way to produce the sharpest edge in the world. The V-shaped tip at the edge of a factory-made blade might look sharp, but it blunts easily. The convex grind on Will's knife, however, is gently curved all the way to the tip. It means it's not only the sharpest blade around, but incredibly hard to blunt. Ultimately, this is the perfect knife. Well, I'm pretty confident that you're not going to find a sharper knife than this, but we can put it to the test later if you like. In today's Sheffield, tools made by hand may well be a rarity. Yet for me, they will always offer something far above their machine-made equivalents. The pleasure in using a knife like Will's is the knowledge that even its smallest detail is the result of hours of real human love and attention. I leave Will in the heat of the workshop to add the final touches to the blade. A few days later, I'm back to pick up the final product for my craftsman's dinner. Hi, Hello. Michelle. How you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Now, well, here we are in its special box. It's in here, in its lovely box. OK, yeah. let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> wow, look at that. See all those little holes, those divots or dimples that you made. And you. <laughs> yeah, all right, maybe that one or that one. Yeah, yeah, all the good ones. Wow, it's got my name on it. Yep, yep. Brilliant. And it just Excellent. feels so good. Oh, that is stunning. No, I'm glad you like it. Beautiful. Now, it feels quite sharp. Mm hmm. Should we put it to the test? <laughs> right, OK then. To see just how Will's knife squares up, he's devised a tomato-based knife off against a factory-made blade. This is a shop-bought factory knife. You can have a feel. Yeah, that's, that's reasonably sharp. I mean, it's a, it's a good knife. It's a good chef's knife. Grand. And um, if you just pop it on the bowl there... Yeah. ..with the edge pointing upwards... OK. ..I'm going to simply drop the tomato... I see where you're coming from. OK, right. And uh, let's hope that it'll uh, perform. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Let's go. Oh, well, hell, that man. That was a real bouncer, wasn't it? It's kind of done something to the skin, but it's not really cut it at all, has it? That was a... It just, just bruised it. It's a decidedly underwhelming performance from the factory-made blade. But can Will's knife fare any better? Now then, here's the, uh, here's the real test for the Ferriby handmade knife, eh? Did you hear it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I told you it was sharp. <laughs> you know what that calls for? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> A little celebration of your skills and your appreciation. <laughs> and my appreciation. <laughs> All right. Lovely. Oh. Cheers, good health. Cheers, man. <laughs>